Ted and I, my husband and I, discovered Cam Scott Manor in a very unusual way because Ted's uncle lived in Kelmscott. Ted and uh, he went fishing one day above Kelmscott. I slipped round the corner, got out of my clothes and swam in the nude in the river. And it was he who told us these moorings were only a hundred yards from William Morris's summer home. Morris describes this walk from the river to Kelmscott Manor in his uh, great novel, News From Nowhere. Almost without my will, my feet moved along the road they knew. On the right side, we could see a cluster of small houses and barns, new and old. And there was a grey stone barn and a wall partly overgrown with ivy, over which a few grey gables showed. And we stood presently on a stone path which led up to the old house, the garden between the wall and the house, redolent of June flowers in that delicious superabundance of small, well-tended gardens and the house itself was a fit guardian for all the beauty of that heart of summer. This was uh, William Morris's dream house. He fell in love with it. it the moment, first moment he walked through that gate. And the reason why he was so attracted was that first it was highly traditional. It's, it was built of the local stone. It belongs to the tradition of the stone building regions of Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire, and into the Cotswolds. And secondly, it wasn't grand. It's big, uh, but there is no note of false grandeur about it. To Morris, it was timeless because uh, he felt it was so such an integral part of the whole of this rural area and that the house, he said, seemed as though it had grown out of the soil and the lives of the people that lived in it. Well, here's our names in the visitor's book. Heads and mine on May the 1st, 1974, when we came here. Labour Day was introduced as a bank holiday by the uh, previous Labour government, and we were taking advantage of it to get into our beloved countryside. I'm sure William Morris would have approved of Labour Day. The real significance of William Morris reached me when I was in my early 20s, when one of my great political mentors and dear friend, William Mellor, gave me the collected works and saying you could do a lot worse than read that. Now, I got fired by Morris's message that politics needn't be drab and ugly. It should be inspired. It, it should be full of sensual beauty. Because, as he said, art is socialism. Socialism is art, or else it's nothing. The designs that are hanging everywhere, in the bedrooms and so on, the, the bed coverings, the fabrics, they were Morris expressing the beauty he found in this area. I mean, there is a very rural element in his designs. The winds on the wold and the night is a cold, and the Thames runs chill twixt mead and hill, but kind and dear is this old house here. I always feel when I'm in this house, not that I'm in a museum, but that in my, I'm in a place where the thoughts of one lover of beauty and creator of beauty were reaching out into the problems of the modern world. 
this uh, was always Morris's obsession, that beauty must be shared. It was a right that belonged to everyone, and if they were denied it, there would be some sort of revenge come down on us all. I get this spirit in Kelmscott. The wonderful uh, ability he has, both to enjoy the beauty himself and never lose his desire to share it. And to him it would all be sterile if he wasn't spending a great deal of his activities in London agitating, marching, demonstrating, writing. This is not an aristocratic house. It's a democratic house. It spills over into the village and the ordinary people. Ah, there is William Morris' grave. Typical that it should be in a quiet corner of the churchyard of the church he loved so much, and that it should be such a simple stone. As I look at his final resting place, I'm vividly reminded of that verse in the message of the March Wind. From township to township, all downs and by tillage, far, far have we wandered, and long was the day. But now cometh eve at the end of the village, where over the grey wall the church riseth grey. Come down to the inn, love, and the lights and the fire, and the fiddler's old tune and the shuffling of feet. Soon for us shall be quiet and rest and desire, and tomorrow's uprising to deeds shall be sweet.